screen so you can see how the new interface looks and how slick and easy it is to use. So I'm going to start off by drawing um, a little part. We're actually going to design um, look at this component here, this picture that you see on my desktop. Right, so starting out with a sketch as usual and you'll see as I start drawing my sketch, I start getting feedback. So for instance, we're putting two over there. I hit tab, I can now go in and put in my next dimensions, that 13.5. And then I have a fully constrained sketch. But off of this, I'm going to draw another line off of there. And you'll see it's starting to give you feedback regarding an angle and a length. So we're going to come down on the length here at 18 millimeters. And the angle in there is 52 degrees. Right, again from here, I'm just going to draw an arc. And I'm going to link that up to the bottom over there. Going to need to do a little bit of cleaning up. So I'll put in a tangent between that line and there, and one dimension just to finish it off of 3.5. Okay, um, I might just want to turn that into a construction line. Right, now when I hit finish sketch, this is where you'll start seeing a bit more of the new interface. Um, this is very intelligent, and all I do, if I click on a line, okay, the feedback I get is, what would you like to do? Would you like to add an extrusion? Would you like to do a revolve? Or would you like to edit the initial sketch? So if I mouse over to edit the initial sketch over there, you'll see I get um, everything highlighted in yellow. In this instance, I'm going to do an extrude. But as I said before, I've minimized some menu boxes. So my extrude menu box that you're used to sitting over here, and I've set it to auto hide so it actually go away. But I've tucked it away because we're not going to use them. We're going to use the heads up display, which is sitting over here. Right, obviously I can move it around as you've just seen. So the dynamic input, You'll see over here, I can just drag this and I get a, a, a feedback straight away and I can actually see what the numbers are as well. I've got an option to choose direction one, direction two as always, and symmetrical. But what's new in 2011 is that we now have the option to do an asymmetric. So I could drag this side over here down 1.75, but drag this one out to say 9.750, and we can have an asymmetric offset, which is nice. Um, but in this instance, we're going to go for symmetrical, and we're going to go for three millimeters, and in it goes. Right, so there's the first part of my design. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a sketch on this plane, and just by clicking on the plane, I get an option to draw a new sketch, quite happy with. And I'm just going to say, right, slice my graphics. What I'd like to do is put a rectangle from the midpoint of that line down the bottom over there. And I'm coming up over here. And I want to say that I'm going to come across six millimeters. I'm just going to hit enter. Quick constraint to tidy things up. We'll put that point over there onto this line. And we'll then finish our sketch. Right from here, again, click on the sketch. Tell it we want to do a revolve. It asks me for a profile to reselect it. It's not telling it needs an axis. There's my axis. Now, obviously, inside of here, you can grab this and you can do quite a few things. And this is where the dynamic input really comes in. Uh, if you have a look over here, as I come back through here, okay, um, and we'll go back into the solid, it'll actually start, okay, I expected it to cut up, but it hasn't. Um, right, but again, all of your usual tools, so I can go through here, we can say we want it to be a full revolve, and then it goes. Right, um, one more sketch on the plane. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to draw a circle from the midpoint over here. And this circle is going to have a diameter of 6.5. Okay. Right, when we come out, click on sketch. Whoops, wrong one. Click on the sketch. Choose extrude. Tell it that we'd like to go symmetrical. And we'll just drag it out to the required 14.5, or we can type in 14.5, and there it goes. Right, now, you also notice if I click on anything, I get an option to draw a new sketch on, on the face, for instance, or I can edit an existing sketch, or I can edit the existing feature. So I've really got good selection tools available. Right, I'm going to put some holes through this component, so I'm very quickly going to just create some new sketches, and the center points that I get from these sketches would be what I'll use to place the holes. Okay, 
So now I'm just going to grab my hole tool and we'll start over here and we're going to say, right, we're going to stick a hole through all and that one's going to be three millimeters. Fantastic. And another hole on that point over there. This one's going to be 7.5. That's also going to go through all. And the last hole we want, that point over there, a little bit different. It's going to be a threaded hole. We're going to say it's going to be an isometric M profile. more realistic looking than the previous versions and you'll see that a bit later on when I do an assembly. Okay, so from here we've got the basic design but this is where this heads up display gets interesting. If I now start clicking on edges, so well, let's first off just sketch. So we'll click on this face over here and we'll draw up a quick shape. Okay, notice that um, I've just picked up a parallel constraint over there, perpendicular I'm going to come back here, we want to stay parallel to the edges and I want to line up to the bottom over there. So I just need to put in a quick two-point over there. Right. Now, I've also got the option to add in um, parameters on the fly. So this was something that was new in 2010 but not well known. So for instance, if I type in your offset, and anything inventor will always go red if the system can't compute it. So offset means nothing to the system yet. So if I say offset equals, and I put in 1.5, that's now a parameter. And it will actually appear in my parameters. And there it is, offset 1.5. Right, and what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to add in the same offset again. This is where this dynamic input is really interesting. As I drag through the solid, you can see it now starts to cut out and show me what it would look like with the material removed. Okay, I obviously can go back in here and I can actually specify when to go through all, so I maintain design intent, and then it goes. Right, now I've got the option to go in and click on an edge, for instance, and tell that edge that we want to add in a fillet. And if I click on another edge, and another edge, and another edge, they'll all be treated as the same fillet, and I can now actually drag and get a realistic feedback of what's going on. So I'm happy with the size, and then it goes. I'll do the same over here. First edge, so that we want to do a fillet. The second edge over here, and we'll drag this out until we have the correct size, and accept it. Right, same thing, um, works the same with fillets, I mean with chamfers, so if we click on there we say we want a chamfer, you get that dynamic feedback straight away, and you've also got the option as before to choose the different types, if you've chosen one, you can actually say plus, and it'll just apply the exact same thing to the opposite edge, and then it goes. Right, we're going to add in one more fillet, and uh, this just shows you how robust the fillets are inside of Inventor. Um, here's my dynamic preview, and you'll see that as you drag this, um, you know, it's quite bulletproof. You get some amazing fillets out of here. 